Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Red Hat Summit here in the beautiful Mile High City, Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are wrapping up three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, back-to-back -back guests. I'm sitting alongside my guest host and, and analyst, Bob LaLiberté. Bob, you're an analyst. How has the conference been going for you? What are, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, absolutely. It's been a great conference, loaded with innovation, a lot of announcements, a lot of talk about open source, democratizing AI for organizations, helping organizations modernize their environments. So overall, just a lot to take in and a lot to digest over the last couple of days. Well, speaking of innovation, we have with us two of the award winners of the Innovators of the, of the Year Award. These are our next guests. I'd like to introduce AJ Walgoday. He is the VP and Global Head of IBM and Red Hat Hybrid Cloud COE at Capgemini Financial Services. Welcome, AJ. Thank you. And also Nitin Shavan. He is the Senior Director of IBM and Red Hat Hybrid Cloud COE Capgemini Financial Services. Thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Oh, Thank you for having us here. And congrats again on the award. That's really exciting. Oh, that's, that's been exciting. I mean, we were looking forward for this award. It's been great to have that award and then get, get recognized at this level. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So AJ, I want to start with you. Sure. Um, Capgemini just, re just released a world cloud report. Right. I'd love you to walk through our, to our viewers what the trends you're seeing in terms of cloud adoption and really, and really what's happening in the industry. Give us the lay of the land. Right, I mean, before I talk about the trends, let me introduce the report itself. You know, what does the report? Because this is a first of a kind report which is very focused on financial services. I mean, it's a state of cloud for financial services customers. So this report is actually a 360 degree view of how our customers, our technology firms are looking at all of these adoption as well as the SMEs from the financial services perspective. So just to give the numbers how we conducted this report, so it was a combination of survey as well as interviews, in-person interviews with the senior execs. So we interviewed close to 500 of the technology executives from financial services clients, right? We also interviewed 200 customers and the executives from technology firms who are supporting financial services like you know, hyperscalers and we interviewed Red Hat as well. We also did you know, 30 senior exec interviews. Uh, Red Hat and IBM both interviewed for that particular thing to talk about how CXOs are seeing it. And finally, we brought in our Capgemini's domain experience. So we talked to our BAs, our domain experts, our practice leaders on the domain side of it to get that perspective. So this report is an amalgamation of all of those. The key theme of this report really was is your cloud journey bringing you the value that you are desired to? So it is not focused on technology adoption only, but also is it realizing the business value why you chose cloud for, right? And I think that was the most important thing. So talking about the trends, I'll, I'll bucket them in two categories. One was purely focused on the business value part of it. So we see three trends. So what we are really looking at, customer experience and operational excellence are key to financial services customers. Most of these applications are already under the cloud. Yeah. We believe that the cloud-enabled composable platforms, that means you kind of compose your financial services into various processes and combine them together on the cloud, that's going to be critical for the success of financial services onto the cloud to achieve the business value. And third, there has to be a very comprehensive strategy looking at your containers, microservices, cloud-native technology, and your hyperscaler strategy to derive the value out of that. That's the business value side of it. And you asked about the adoption in terms of the cloud trends. It's very interesting adoption. We have seen, I mean, when we first looked at this in, in, in August of 2020, the cloud adoption was, what, 37%? And when I talk about cloud adoption, I talk about PaaS, which is platform as a service, software as a service, infrastructure as a service. That has accelerated to 91%. So it's a significant journey in the last three years, right? But, you know, if you look at financial services, only 50% of the applications are into the cloud right now. And those are predominantly customer experience and front-end applications. Yeah. The core applications are st still not under the cloud. So while there's an acceleration, we see there's an opportunity which is up there. And cloud native, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, that's the trend that we are seeing. So, so if, you, if you summarize that, it, you know the financial services firms are really looking at the business value extraction. They are focusing on the customer experience and operational efficiency right now core application still needs to be on the cloud, and cloud native probably is the way in the hybrid cloud world that that's needs to go there, right? So that, that's what we are seeing from the World Cloud Report. Excellent, now that, yeah. that sounds great. And I think we've seen that adoption rate as well with organizations shifting to the cloud, starting with maybe some of the easier applications to move, kind of hard to move stuff off mainframe right away, right, yeah. that modernization that's effort. Correct. So yeah. seeing a lot of those, those trends taking place as well. And you talked about the business results, which is great, because ultimately yeah. that's what it's all about, in that, that operational efficiency, driving better results, driving better customer experiences, right. right? so you drive your growth of your business and so forth. But 
Nit, and I wonder if we could dive into the technology a little bit. We are here at Red Hat. Could you talk about how financial institutions in particular are leveraging technologies like OpenShift to help accelerate their adoption of cloud services? Yeah, sure. Uh, as you just mentioned, and uh, as you also read the Hybrid Cloud report, is most of the financial services organizations are adopting hybrid multi-cloud environment, right? And uh, OpenShift is in the middle of it because OpenShift is a platform which provides you a cloud native development environment in the on-premise infrastructure, in the public cloud, and also at the edge locations, right? So this flexibility allows our customers to start thinking cloud native right now without even having a public cloud strategy, right? So they don't really have to have public cloud strategy ready. And many of our customers, like Ajay said, went from 37% to 91% in the cloud adoption, but that does not mean all 91% are having 100% of the workloads on the cloud. Yeah. I think the workloads that are migrated are mostly customer experience, as Ajay mentioned, but many of the regulatory workloads, uh, any of the you know, batch processing and things like that are still on-premise, right? So OpenShift gives them the ability to start thinking cloud native right now and start moving applications into public cloud whenever they are ready in the future, right? So that's one thing. The second reason that customers are adopting OpenShift is because of the developer productivity. Because developer productivity, in a sense, accelerate time to market or accelerate innovation faster, right? So OpenShift provide developer tools and APIs so that developer can build deploy and manage their applications seamlessly across hybrid cloud. It provides consistent DevSec of experience. Doesn't matter whether a developer is working on-premise or AWS with Rosa or you know, Azure with ARO, they see the same developer console which they can use to develop their applications, right? They can do a self-serve uh, development region, so they don't really have to worry about, you know, my application is ready, but my environment is not ready, should I wait for it? So they can just do a self-serve development environment. They can get st t testing right away, right? And last, I think they have a lot of integration with the open source tools like Git, Jenkins, you know, VS Code. So all those tools are available for them to get started right away, right? So all of this is really improving developer productivity and reducing the learning curve for our developers, right? And the third thing is about the whole innovation angle, right? So. Customers are looking to do innovations just not in the public, but into the uh, private cloud, right? right? So they need a consistent platform where they can bring the innovation faster, to bring the time to market faster, right? So that's why more and more our customers are adopting OpenShift. In fact, we have seen that there are certain industry events that has happened yeah. in the past year or so, where the past cloud native platform have reached end of life, and some of the vendors got acquired, there is a merger and acquisitions happening in the industry, and that has really offshoot the license prices for these platforms. So many of our customers are looking for a way to adopt a platform which is more open source, more well-defined, and has you know a very strong support and roadmap, right? And OpenShift fits the bill, and that's why we see customers adopting the OpenShift platform. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's great, and and I, one of my favorite expressions is cloud native yeah. doesn't mean public cloud that's only. Correct. Yes, and so seeing that, hey, we can get you started here on premises in your data center, helping to drive that productivity. I think that's a great great use case for these organizations, and it allows them to seamlessly scale into the clouds or multiple clouds. And we yeah. had a very interesting debate in the executive exchange. Is it, is it the developer productivity that that is offering or developer experience? We all agreed, and there were customers, and then the GSIs and all of that, we all agree that it's the developer experience that is changing the world. Yes. Developer productivity, just one dimension of it. But I think that's, that's most important, you yeah. know, changing I mean, the developer experience. One of our customer who is who has adopted the OpenShift like three years back, and now most of their applications are working on OpenShift. Uh, when they were invited to speak in a sessions like this in our, uh, in our office, so they said that I work with OpenShift because that's how I see my developers getting consistent day of sick of experience, no matter whether they are on-premise or on a cloud. So tomorrow I bring another cloud. I don't have to worry my developer has to learn another cloud because OpenShift is going to be there. Right, and that's why we adopted OpenShift. Yeah. How much of this, I mean, when you think about 
every company, of course, is, is concerned about safety and privacy, but financial services especially so. Yeah. So how much of the trends that you're seeing are driven by um, security concerns and, and questions about that have to do with compliance? Right, I think uh, regulators play a key role out here, right? I mean, uh, you know, the, the common thing which I get asked is about, are you moving to OpenShift or Cloud Network just because your regulator's asking you to do that? I think let's, let's look at the regulator's lens, how they're looking at. Uh, the regulators are really concerned about cloud concentration. They are worried about vendor lock-ins. What they are worried really about, are your mission critical applications on a similar cloud? What if they fail? You know, they also take a very holistic systematic view saying that, what if the top five banks have all their payment infrastructure on similar cloud? What if it fails? it will have a cascading effect impact, right? right. And I think OpenShift really is at, at, at the point where it gives you optionality, it gives you flexibility to choose where you want to go to, right? And you're cloud native, and I think that's it's very important that all these trends are people concerned about security, the, the vendor lock-ins and all of that. Cloud native and product like OpenShift will give you the option to move forward, right? I mean, that's what we see as the future, uh, you know, as going forward. Yeah, and the regulatory, Environment is very different geography to geography, right? Sure. In certain geography, regulators are forcing customers to adopt open hybrid platform. In certain geography, they are not. But I think what custom, why customers are choosing this platform is because of the value that it brings to them, right? And what you'd see, if you, if you look at the, the World Cloud Report, I'm going back to the World Cloud Report, we have given examples of how the customers have adopted cloud native technologies, be it you know, migrating from mainframe to going to hybrid cloud, be it kind of you know, completely being adopting to cloud native technology for developer experience, or you know, moving your workloads to, to you know, address the regulatory needs. So I think those are full of examples out there. So we just don't talk about the trends, we talk about where people have done that and how they have done it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, you know, obviously being at the show this week, there's been a lot of talk sure. about AI. <laughs> and so we can't have a conversation without bringing that up. So Nitin, I wonder if you can discuss maybe how you're seeing Gen AI impact some of these customer journeys, how they're getting started with that, how Capgemini is helping them get started with their Gen AI stories and what you're seeing. And you're absolutely right. So Gen AI has become taken a spotlight in all our discussions in last one year. In fact, every discussions when we have with customers, unrelated to AI, eventually it ends up with the question, can we do this differently with Gen AI, right? right. So, Gen AI is basically taking a spotlight in all our discussions that we are having with customers, right? right. So one of, one of the use cases that customers that we are working with, right, is more of a customer experience. Uh, but that's not the only use case uh, that customers are thinking about. They are thinking about customer experience, financial engineering, the risk management, innovation, accelerated time to market, the use cases are wide. And customers are at a stage where they want to try everything. They want to do a proof of concept. Right. And proof for a proof of concept, they need a quick platform that can get them started. And that's where the cloud comes in between, right? So cloud helps them to get started. It provides them a platform with the developer tools, the necessary compute, and the required storage so that they can start building the model right away, right? And it also provides the tools that can do a synthetic data generation, the rapid testing and iterations, right? So what makes it possible for business is they can experiment with multiple models and they can select the one which is most effective and then bring it to market faster, right? So that is where the cloud is playing a significant role for our customers. And the cloud's ability to provide you this infrastructure and not, not, not allow, uh, not making you to invest into this massive infrastructure is actually creating a level playing field for our customers, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's a large customer or a small customer. Sure. So both have access to the same GNAI tools, the same data, the same storage, the same compute, right? And we see the disruption happening in the financial industry. So we look at wealth management, we look at personal banking, we look at mortgage, we look at insurance, right? There are many fintechs and small players who have come in the last three years it's because cloud was helping them to get started right away. They were born in the cloud and they are disrupting our customers in a big way, right? Uh, so how we help our, to our customers is basically we come in between where you know we bring the knowledge and the skills to implement these Gen AI prototypes with our customers, you know, help them to get start get uh, get started with the uh, you know cloud native platform, build the models, train the models, and when they are ready, deploy those on premise so that they can win for right. 
So we did talk about you know cloud first for Agen AI, but that's not the only thing that our large customers are thinking about. Yeah. I think they are thinking about hybrid cloud approach, right? So they are looking at a ways that where they can build model on cloud, they can test model on cloud with the synthetic data, and once it is ready, they can bring in their on-premise infrastructure and they can deploy it, they can infer it, right? So to summarize, yes, cloud is helping our customers to adopt Gen AI faster, but also customers are thinking in hybrid cloud approach so that they can build models on cloud, but they can bring on-premise and use it in case of data privacy or security issues. And what Capgemini are really doing is bringing all those ecosystems together to drive the business value for the customers, right? right. Bringing in those um, fintechs that Nitin talked about, our experience with the financial services, partners like Red Hat and IBM to bring them together to you know, drive the business value, and that's you know, at the aim at the end of the day. Excellent, yeah. well said from the innovators of the year, so yeah. <laughs> that's the secret sauce. Yeah. AJ and Nitin, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE, a really great conversation. It was nice to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Rebecca Knight for Bob La Liberté. Please stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage from the Red Hat Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in technology enterprise coverage.